Hello, party people. Here we are. Project number two. That's four. Two. <laughs> Project number two. This is what we are working on right now. This is project two, the bugle. The bugle necklace. Um, so if you hear some commotions going on, don't worry. That's just the cats. I don't know what's going on with them today. They're crazy. So anyway, here we are. <laughs> project number two. So let's get on down to the mat. Get this party started. Alrighty, <clears throat> here we are on the mat, project number two for Bargain Bead Box November. This guy is just a little, um, just a little cute kind of double-stranded necklace. We are going to be utilizing these beads here. I'm still drinking my, <clears throat> I'm still drinking my uh, hot cocoa. <clears throat> Had to have a little zip of that. Oh, oh, oh. All right. So these are the beads that we have. This is the design. And so basically, we are going to do some bugle beads, which I have here, which you could use any color. Um, bugle beads down, and where we're going to split into two and do these different type of things. So this first one is going to be strong. The second one is also going to be strong, but all of these here are going to be wire wrapped. So first things first, we're going to get out our um, the dyed crackle beads, and we're going to wire wrap so that we're prepared for that, and then we will move on. For stringing materials, I am going to use, let me see what I got. use I'm looking I'm looking what did I use last time let me use the white the beetle on 19 strand is that what I use I think that's what I used last time was the beetle on 19 strand is that what it was or did I use this one I can't remember anyway I'm gonna use the beetle on again um, for this situation. Oh, here, I have a piece cut. Is that enough? Hold on, let me see what I got. Eh, no. I don't think it's enough. Okay, I'm going to use this beetle on guy for the stringing material. And we're going to get into it. So starting out with the, with the wire wrapping, and uh, then we'll move on from there. Okay, so these are all the beads that we're going to use. Let's get those prepped and ready to go. So this is uh, the other half of our little strand that we cut up. Although I think at this point it might be a little less than half. but we're just going to use what we got. Use what we got. Okay, get these bicons off of here and ready to rock. got these guys here so this is what we're going to be wrapping right away um <clears throat> so in the strand of this necklace I have uh, these guys and I think that'll be fine and then I have some of these up in the strand part. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to split this and see where we end up. So I'm just splitting this strand into two. Oh, 
we got one extra one. I'll put that in the strand. So this will be for the top strand, and this is going to be for the bottom strand. And like 10? Do we have like 10? 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10. Well, 12, 13, 14, 15. We have 15. That's fine, I guess. Let's do that. Okay, so this is this this half is for the top, <clears throat> and these will be for the bottom strand. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to wrap all 15 of these into um, into wrap them so that they're ready to go and be strong. So to do that, I'm going to utilize some ball head pins. And I think I'll just use these little gold ones because I have some. And uh, you could use wire or whatever, but oh, this one doesn't belong in there. So we'll use these and we'll see how far we get on that. And there we go. Okay, so to start wrapping all these beads, all I'm going to do is just the bead. I'm not going to put any extra anything on there. And I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so I'm just doing that because otherwise my camera don't focus very good. <clears throat> so it's really easy. All you do is you're going to put this on your ball head pin. You're going to make sure that you have a ball head pin that the ball is big enough. For most stone beads, the, all of these are fine. It's not usually an issue. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. And what I do is I leave a little bit of space because that's where your wrap is going to go. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you're making these all the same size. So wherever you decide to put the pin in, that's where you're going to have to put it in every time. So once I got it where I want it, I'm then going to give it a little bend and this bottom part of the plier should hit the bead, right? Not too much. It's up to you as long as you're making them the same size. So then you're going to rotate your plier, right? Come all the way around. I put my plier back like this and then I'm just going to wrap it usually get around there about two and a half times you can do more if you want to that's completely up to you I'm gonna squish this loop and then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna tuck that wire in and that is all there is to it okay so we'll do one more same thing I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to grab a hold of it make sure that it's all in the same same size of where it was before I'm going to then bend my wire back you see how it's bent back go around the top of the plier and you get this looking situation you're gonna let loose and spin your plier to the other side because we're creating a, a circle and I'm going to bring that all the way around 90 degrees. So if I take this off of there, that's what it looks like. It's usually the same how I do all my wraps. Now, people do wraps differently. It's up to you, however you want to do your wraps, whatever's comfortable for you. But this is how I do it. Okay, wrap it around about two and a half times. Then I'm going to come in and I'm going to trim. Now, I do try to trim pretty close. Up by the bead I squish this to give it a little work harden then I come in and I just tuck in the tail and there we go okay so now we have two okay so we're gonna do this with all of these so I'm just gonna complete that 
and uh, I will pop back on once I've got them all ready to go because that's pretty repetitive. So I'll be right back. All right, here we are with our spun up wire wrapped beads. So this is 15 beads. <clears throat> and now I think what we should do, I mean, there's a couple of ways we could do it, but I think we should start in the middle of this necklace. So these ones and these ones are going to be for the bottom. We're going to start on the bottom. Also, we have these um, bugle beads. So I did add these from my stash. Now we have smaller ones and larger ones. And I think I'm going to do the smaller ones in this bottom portion. So... We will get a few of those out here. And then, um, so I'm going to be using Beadalon 19 strand silver color. And I'm going to be using, we're going to be using two strands uh, basically at the same time. But since we're starting in the first one here, um, this is going to be the longer strand. Let me see here. We're running low. Maybe we're not going to use this. Let me see how much we got. We're, we're out ski. Okay. So we're going to have to switch to a different situation. I just don't think that this is going to be enough to do what we need it to do for both strands. So I'm going to put that back on there. And we're going to look for something different. All right, I'm going to use this 0.3 millimeter silver. This is just your run of the mill Walmart wire, seven strand. Okay. Um, I'm using it because it's 0.3 millimeter. Okay, this is the reason I'm using it. It's <clears throat> if you had a soft flex fine or if you even had a beetle on seven strand which is usually 0.3 you know whatever you got going on um the 0.3 millimeter i really like when i do the double up in any situation is because it's thin enough to get through the horseshoes twice okay so that's the reasoning <clears throat> so we're going to use this and Let's see. I'm not really going to need that much. I'm just going to give her a cut. I have about half a wings band here, which is probably too much, but I'm better safe than sorry. And I'm just going to string up the bottom portion. So using the bottom portion, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to start. And I'm just going to go until my wraps are gone. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, hmm, should we do one? One's probably good. One bugle. One purple. One wrapped bead. One purple, one bugle. Okay, let's see how that looks for us. So, so I think that's a pretty good little pattern. You could do any pattern you wanted here, like I said before. You could do more bugles, less bugles, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to go with this. I'm going, do I have a bead stopper? Yeah. I'm going to put a bead stopper on the end here so that I don't lose the whole works. And I'm just going to go like this until all of my wrapped beads are done, are gone. So instead of putting another bugle, I'm just going to let that be the pattern. So then I'm going to do purple. 
wrapped bead. Purple. Bugle. So that's what it's going to look like. I quite enjoy that actually. All right. So we got purple, wrapped bead, purple, bugle. So we're just going to go like this until all of our wrapped beads are gone. So we're kind of creating a little fringe here kind of situation, which I like. I like it. This would even make a cute bracelet idea. Now if I wasn't to do it on a bracelet, just this, just this, I would do it on a thicker strand. So that's important to note, I use a small wire when I am doubling up wire. Um, but if I was to make this where I'm only going to do this one and I'm not going to use it in this necklace, I would probably use a stronger wire. I will say that in my head this was about the length and then remember we, I said oh well we have 15 beads we'll just go ahead and use them um, that one's gonna make it longer okay but maybe you're into that so I already have them here so I'm just gonna use them but um, I will say that I had the idea of originally making it a little bit shorter, but that's fine. We will go with it. By adding these five extra bead, bead beads. Okay, so this is going to be our bottom. My my loop on here is crooked. I can tell because it's hanging crooked. So I'm gonna give it a little bend there. And there we go. So this is gonna be our bottom strand. I quite enjoy it. Now think of this. If it was a bracelet, that would just be cute. Is that not just the cutest little thing? I am. I quite enjoy that. Learn something new every day. Okay, 
So now I know you're like, well, Randy, we got all this wire. Why do we have all this wire? Because all this wire is also, we're going to now start the stringing portion. So we're going to cut another piece of wire and uh, that is going to feed in. This part is going to feed into the next piece of wire that we cut. So you're about to see what I mean. Okay, so now for the second part of um, the necklace, the, the strung portion with no charms on it. I'm going to get another piece of wire And we are going to then add, let me just put this to the side for a minute. Now we are going to add these. Now at this point, I'm not going to put any bugles in this strand. This is a design choice. I'm going to use these guys, these guys, and these guys to create a little pattern. I don't know exactly what the pattern is going to look like. Uh, right at this moment, but um, also I want to have uh, one, two, three, four. I need eight of these to stay out because those are going to go in the strand. Six, eight. Apparently, eight's my number with this going on these days. So I am going to start in the middle. I am going, I'm designing from the middle. That's why it's like, what is happening right now? Um, I'm going to put my bead stopper on and then we're just going to create a pattern. I'm going to use these guys to create a pattern. And I'm going to go until all of these are gone, right? Same kind of over here, except for just whatever pattern I decide to do. So I think I will start. Mm. I am going to have to put, I am going to put a bugle on the end to start. This is the only bugle that I'm going to put on here because I'm going to need it to make it look like these two need to go together. So bugle first, then let's do bicone, quartz, yellow, quartz. I don't know if I'll have enough quartz for that. So I'm only going to do one. And let me just see how this is looking. That's pretty good. So I'm just going to repeat this. Um, I'm not going to add another bicone, so I'm just going to go here. Yellow, yellow, purple. And you could add metal if you wanted, whatever you want to do here. Yellow, yellow, purple. Yellow. Yellow, purple. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to take these five out because remember this is a tiered necklace and we had added those other five in. So I'm going to take these five out so that it makes sense, right? And then 
that should leave us bicone on the end, or I'm sorry, bicone, bugle. Okay, so this should be our our top strand. So let's let's get this out of the way so we can look at it. These are the eight that we need for the strand. We're gonna since I have these different col these different size bugles, I am going to switch over to the longer bugles now. Just for because why not? Design choice. I am gonna need a few smaller ones. So these are the same color. But I am gonna need a few smaller ones to kind of bring all this together, so I'm gonna leave those out for right now. Zip of my cocoa. And here is what we're going to do. Take this off of there. <clears throat> okay. So our goal here is to bring these two together like so. Right? And we're going to just do that by putting on beads onto, sorry, my camera just went to sleep or whatever. Uh, so we're going to do that by putting beads onto both strands of wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm in this top wire, I'm going to add another bugle to the end just so it gives it a little more length um, with how it's going on, that's goings ons. <clears throat> okay, just like that. And then this one, I'm just going to leave. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to put the bead stopper over here on this side so that we don't lose everything. I'm going to put it towards the end just in case it crinkles up this wire. Okay, over here we are going to then take one of the, we're going to take both ends and they are going to be different sizes because I cut my wires different sizes because this, this bottom one had to be a lot longer. Not to worry. I'm going to go into the larger bugle with both strands. Okay, pull this down like so, and so this is how that is going to come together, just like that. So since they are the same color, it's going to give us give us a, the visual, and it makes them come to come together pretty well. I feel like because <clears throat> they're the same color, but the the bugle is small, so it's not like a big round bead in the middle. I like that. And so I'm going to do, um, now a yellow quartz on this side. And then I think I'm going to do uh, three of these. So I'm going to go one. Again, got to just make sure that you're getting them onto both strands. Two, three, and this is giving me like kind of liquid silver vibes. Like, um, it kind of looks like its own chain or its own corning or something, with these long bugles. Yeah, look at that. Does that look good? Nice. And then I'm going to put on a quartz. So I've reserved four quartz for each side of the necklace. So I got two on there now, so then I got to do three of the long ones onto both. I mean, you could cut this, but it's whatever, it's up to you. Three.
then a cord, boom, one, two, And then this is the last cords for this side. Now, dependent on how long you want this, <clears throat> um, we do have extra cords left. So let's just say that this is where we're at. So I'm feeling like we're going to have to add a little more. Where is my, uh, my tape measure? So I'm feeling like we're going to have to add a little more length because let's not forget that you are measuring to this one. This is your first layer. And so this one needs to be, you know, at the very least 18 inches long and then these others. Um, so let's take a look. At this point in time, this is only going to be about, it's not quite 18 right now. It's about 14 or so. And the longest one is 18. So we need to go um, a couple of more inches. And honestly, I would even go a little longer than 18. That's up to you. But um, I think we will put on maybe two additional of the quartz with the three bugles. Just to give it the length. At least one more. We gotta go at least one more, maybe two. We're gonna have our find or our you know, we're gonna have our findings and all that at the end, but Okay. So there's one. The courts. So now this guy is about 18 in the middle. So this one is about 18. So it's about two inches, I guess. I'm going to go again. I'm going to go one more time. So that the shortest one will be 20. And then the next one will be 24, 26 or whatever it is. Just give us a little more length. I mean, you wouldn't have to do that, but. Cheese, what a cheese. The last one. Alright. Yeah, I'm thinking that'll be good. Alrighty. So there's that side. So now I'm going to switch this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I think these ones are pretty even on this side. I'm going to put the bead stopper on. And so we got we ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six quarts. So I have extra quarts over here. Should we use these two? Three, four, five, six. Okay. And so I put two on here, yeah. One on here. Okay. So now on this side. Um I'm going to put my first bugle to bring it together. And so there you can see what it's actually going to look like. Right? Pretty neat. I quite enjoy it. Anyway, it would be, it would also depend, I'm done with these small ones now, so I put these away. Um, 
it would also depend on the color of bugle you decided to use like you know if I would have went with that gold it really would have changed the whole look of the necklace um, you could have went with a completely different color because I mean we have purple and yellow basically so you could have went with whatever color but it's going to change kind of the look of it so any hootie okay so we got one And then we go one. Oh, oh, two, three, quarts. Two. So that is the end. Now I have to make sure that this is as long as I want it. Do I really want it that long? Thought I did, but do I? 22. 22. I don't know. I think I'll back up. I think I'm going to back up. There's no rules against backing up. Yeah, I think I'm going to take off that last set. I just, I don't know, I'm feeling like that's a little bit too much. Yeah, just because of the function of the necklace, like, I just feel like maybe shorter is better. Okay, so I'll put this away and put these away, and then we'll finish her up. Maybe. <laughs> Get these guys back in here. And we got gold going on, so we need some gold horseshoes. Okay, so I'm going to show you the gold horseshoe situation. We probably need some bead covers. We've got some crimp beads. So that's what we need. Oh, well, we need a lobster claw. And... We for jumping. Okay. All right. So here's what we gotta do. Put all their findings on.
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim this so it makes it a little easier for us. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure there isn't any slack in the cord. I'm going to go with the bead, crimp bead, first. Put that on there. Then I'm going to go with the horseshoe. Now, with both tails, I'm going to go up through the horseshoe. So this is one of those important reasons for using the 0.3 millimeter beading string. They have to be able to fit in here if you're going to work upside down like this. Or like, you know, from the bottom up. Because it's not like you can start here and then, you know, you're starting from the other side. So, anywho, you're going to come around, go back to the horseshoe finding. Make sure you're... Make sure that you are in both, using both tails or getting through that little hole. And then you're going to just pull this back a little bit. And that's going to make it easier to get us into here. Into the crimp bead. Into that bead. I could probably even go down into this bead if I wanted to. Why not? So then I'm going to pull this tight. Now, I want to make sure that both of those wires are ending up where they need to end up at. Inside of the horseshoe. And they are in there. That is good. Now, you don't really need to like pull this super tight because the more you pull on this, um, the more it's going to come out the other end because the other end isn't, you know, connected to anything. So at this point you can just figure out where you want it. <clears throat> and we do need to make sure that it stays in there before we crimp it. Like in the horseshoe. Okay. And then we're going to give it a snip. And then I'm going to put the bead cover on. There we go. So if it's loose or there's wire showing, that's fine because we still have this to tighten up this other side. We're going to do the same thing over here. So I'm just going to remove this. And then you want to make sure to pull these strands individually to make sure that you've got all that slack out. Okay. Now you don't want her to be super tight just like any other time when you're crimping and doing stuff. So you know, but you just want to make sure that there isn't like some weird air bubble or something somewhere. We're going to go in with the crimp bead and the horseshoe. You're going from the bottom of the horseshoe with both strands. And you're coming back around through there. Okay, with both strands, you're going to pull this back, slingshot mode. And you're going to go through the crimp bead, through the quartz, through the bugle on the end here. You don't have to do all that, but I do. And then we're going to just get that slack out. Now, it's important that you do not pull on these. You know, you want them to both come at the same time. You don't want them to be like this because you don't want to end up with a loop like an extra loop up here so kind of try to keep those even as you pull them down and make sure that they both end up on this finding the way that they're supposed to okay so now we are using a bead cover so we got a, a little smidge of, of wiggle room here and I'm going to grab a hold of this bead, pull it up into place, 
crimp. cover. Hmm. I slipped. I did a little slip in there. I think I got her under control. Now we have our necklace. I'm gonna have make friends here. And then we gotta put on our findings. I could put a little bit of that chain on here as an extender. Again, we discussed that. I'm just gonna this one. does this guy work? Yeah, he works. He just felt a little like crooked or something. Weird. A little crooked. Okay. Get that guy on there. Uh, since I'm not gonna use a extender chain for this. I think I might use a larger round um, for the end here. Just because then they know like, oh, you're supposed to clip it right here, you know. Or whatever. Oh, let's see. Here's one. Not that one. That one's real bendy. I'm not feeling safe about it. <laughs> Do not feel safe about that. one's a little bit thicker here. Okay. There we go. Put that up. And not that this necklace is super heavy or anything. Whoop. gold necklace. Isn't that cute? It's quite cute. I do enjoy it very much. Okay, so that's how he's going to lay. Everything seems to be laying pretty good. Nothing like uh, too tight or nothing like that. So that's good. So here is our finished necklace versus the plan photo. Right? Looking pretty dang planny, you know. I always feel like that's how it gets dark when I put this white on there. I don't know. Anyway, so there's that. Looking like a smash hit. And then here is the inspiration photo. 
Let's see, which one was it? Mm, the next one. This one. Here's your inspiration photo. And here's your bargain beatbox doings. Right? There you go. All right, you guys. I hope you are enjoying this. Uh, I know I am having a lovely time with these little cute little designs. I like the way this one turned out. We did have some extra beads. Those are just going to go into um, those are just going to go into our end of the show color blocking necklace or whatever. And so yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this. If you are, uh, make sure you leave a comment uh, and like the video. That would be very much appreciated. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.